if you listen to anybody for long enough, they're going to show you that they worship something. I've come to the opinion, and you may disagree with me, that everybody worships something. It's just a question of how overt that thing is to that person and to the people who know them. One of my videos that I recorded recently was about this concept of uh, resigned hedonism. And embedded within that concept is the assumption that the best way to be uh, as much as possible is in a good mood. That if we feel sadness, <clears throat> depression, grief, anxiety, rather than uh, rather than exploring the reasons why that might legitimately be the case, the best thing to do is to go to a doctor or a psychiatrist or a counselor and receive medication or therapy with the express goal of feeling better. I do not disagree with this as being a a thing to, to want. I mean, I want to feel good too. But when we think about mental health and we think about what it is to be mentally healthy, is it always mentally healthy to feel upbeat and positive all the time? If you look at the circumstances of life, it can often be very justified to, to be anxious or to be depressed if you're isolated or... If there are stresses going on around you, I'm not saying that it's the natural state to be like that all the time either. It's just that the project of feeling good and uh, resigned hedonism, I think, is so <clears throat> so pervasive in society that it's almost a, a shock or seen as a failure for people when they can't uh, have a positive mood. There's, of course, other reasons to go to see a therapist or a counsellor, and that's to experience wholeness or integration, to feel like we've integrated and understood the different parts of ourselves so that we can make better decisions or so that we feel more in contact with the, ourselves and our lives. Now, this is subtly different but fundamentally different to the goal of going to a counsellor or a therapist or a doctor with the goal of feeling better. Now you might and will feel better if you're integrated and whole. But to have that as a goal is to acknowledge that there are going to be legitimate causes to the negative feelings that you have and that rather fro rather than trying to remove the feeling it's about understanding the cause and working on the cause and i'm sure that a lot of a lot of doctors and therapists work more in this way i know that i do but the hedonic uh, worldview that that we have i think very much puts the cart before the horse and says that people worship the the experience of feeling good that's very much how capitalism for, for better or for worse is what sells and what keeps people invested uh, but ultimately i think it's it's a difficult it's a difficult thing to sustain there are of course lots of other things to worship if you belong to a church you might worship the the god or, or god's of that church that will have a particular value set it might be meaning it might be the process of worshiping itself it might be the will of god or all of these things are separate from resigned hedonism in that they place a different hierarchy of value on on the world and on experience you might worship duty your country all of these things are different but i think that everybody worships something and what you worship becomes home. And if that home is challenged, it's very, very painful. I think for 
a long time I worshipped the idea of authenticity, that you you tell the truth and you open your heart without censorship to other people. And this created some very, very nice consequences and it created some negative consequences in my relationships. And that really shook me because I thought, well, I'm I'm worshipping this thing. I have this ideology that I'm always going to tell the truth. Or I'm always going to be, uh, be vulnerable or transparent. And yet the world doesn't always respond in the way that that I want it to. So there's kind of an expectation there that's built in that if I do this, then I'm going to get what I want. And I think all all worship, everything that we worship, has this kind of fragility in, built into it because we're not worshipping something purely for the sake of it. We're worshipping it because we feel that in doing so, we're going to get what we want. And I talked to my friend about this, who I feel like is more of a hedonist. His kind of stance towards life is to do what makes me feel good, to do what makes me feel happy. And if I'm feeling depressed or feeling not good, then to basically go out and, and exercise or take uh, medication or just sort of do whatever it takes to feel good. And I don't disagree with that philosophy I, I really find it quite quite cool and I wish that I could I could learn something from it because it's not something that I find particularly easy but surely at some point the cracks too will show in that in that uh, that philosophy because any time that we don't feel good or any time there is a, a depression or a setback that's can that's kind of like a failure and I don't necessarily think that that's that's true. I think that there are times when it does make sense to, to feel depressed or to feel anxious. It, it's a bit of a, a rambly video, but I suppose the the invitation is to try and look uh, at ourselves from outside and look at what is it that we're worshipping. Is it money? Is it contribution? Is it uh, a traditional religious god or deity? And then I suppose the second step that I'm wrestling with at the moment, to be honest with you, is trying to understand or sort of make peace with the fact that whatever it is that I worship is, is a home that I need and is also insufficient. It's also going to have ways in which it fails to live up to my expectations. Maybe the point is not to have a perfect ideology, a perfect object of worship, but just to accept that there's going to be ups and downs with whatever it is that we choose to gamble our lives believing. And often it's not about whether the thing we believe in is, is true or false. It's about creating a sense of stability, whether that be through family or friends or, or church or uh, science even. So I think that everybody needs that. And it's okay. It's okay to believe or worship things that don't necessarily make sense because it's psychologically stabilizing. So what is it that you worship? What is it that you believe? What is it that you see other people believing that you you don't believe in? I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts and also to reflect on this concept of home, what it feels like when you place your trust in something. Maybe you've had your trust in something shaken. I know that I have, and that can be very unpleasant, very disorientating too. So we're like uh, these little crabs that run around on the ocean floor looking for a shell to fit into. 
so build some kind of identity, build some kind of security. Whatever it is, whatever that is for you, I'd be curious to hear. Thanks for your time.